there everywhere we go. We all have them. They function non-stop for 60, 80, and even 100 years. They're usually quiet. They mind their own business until something goes wrong. We don't really acknowledge them or give them much attention, but the truth is they're the ones keeping us alive. Our organs. Organs are the most fascinating structures in the entire universe. They come in different shapes, different sizes, and they work together to provide the overall functioning for our body so that we can move, we can digest food, and we can even produce abstract thought. But our organs can also fail us. I want you now to imagine the scenario. You're in the doctor's room, and there you hear the sad and horrible news. You've been diagnosed with organ failure, and you need urgent treatment which is transplant surgery. But then the doctor tells you that you could be waiting months, if not years, for the next organ to become available for you. And the chances are that you will die just waiting for the transplant surgery. They're quite high. But that's exactly what our patients experience on a day-to-day -day basis. If only we had organs available, if only we could perform the transplant surgery when required. If only we could do something for our patients. Well, we can now. And today I'd like to take you through a real solution that will revolutionize the way we practice transplant surgery and medicine here in New Zealand. That solution is through bioprinting functional human organs. But before that, let's define what the problem is. The problem is that we have a shortage of organs in New Zealand. But the demand for transplant surgery is increasing each year. In the United States alone, every 10 minutes, a new patient is added to the transplant waiting list. And sadly, every day, 20 patients will die just waiting for a transplant. Our country faces a similar problem. At any given time, in our country, we have over 500 patients waiting for a transplant surgery. But New Zealand has some of the lowest rates in the world for organ donors. In the last 10 years, the, number of disease, the average number of diseased organs per year was about 46. In 2013, we only had 36. So the supply is not meeting the demand. The number of patients needing a transplant surgery is far greater than the number of organs available. So what can we do about this? Well, what if we could print human organs? What if we could then transplant these organs into human patients? What if we could perform transplant surgery exactly when our patients needed them? What if we could save countless number of lives in our country? Well, that is all possible through the technology of bioprinting. So what is bioprinting, and how does it work? Bioprinting is very similar to 3D printing. The only difference is that instead of using plastic, we'll be using live, functional human cells as the material. These cells can be obtained from individual patients. We can take blood samples, we can do biopsies, we can even do minor surgical procedures. Once these cells are obtained, we can differentiate them into the different types. We have muscle cells, smooth muscle cells, endothelial cells, urothelial cells, and the list goes on. Once differentiation is done, we can then grow these cells inside the lab. And after we have the right amount, we can transfer these cells into the cartridges of bioprinters, where they will act as a bio-ink. Once this is achieved, we can then use CT scanners to scan for the internal, internal structures of our patients. These scans can then be transferred onto engineering softwares where models of the exact structure that we want to print can be created. This model is then transferred to our bioprinters, where the, they will act as a blueprint. The bioprinter reads the blueprint, and then it knows what to print, how to print, and where to print. And the bioprinter uses the human cells, and then it uses a special solution known as hydrogels. 
Hydrogels provide the structural integrity of our structures. And it pr the bioprinter prints layer by layer by layer until our structure is achieved. And our finalized result is that we have a structure, this accurate structure that is made from patients' own cells. So that's bioprinting. But the real question that I want to ask is, can we print human organs? And can we transplant these organs into human patients? Well, I'm glad to say that the answer to that question is a big yes. In fact, a group of researchers in America at the Wakefield Research Institute, what they did was they, they actually printed human bladders and they transplanted these bladders into human patients. In their study, they had seven patients with end-stage bladder disease. They took cells from these patients, they differentiated them, they grew them, and then they printed the scaffolding of the human bladder. And the outside of the bladder was covered in the patient's own muscle cells. The inside of the bladder was covered by patient's own urothelial cells, just like a normal bladder. And these pictures are the uh, pictures of, it, of the actual printed bladders. What they did next was that they transplanted these uh, human bladders into the human patients, and then they were followed up for about six years. What the study found was that there were significant improvements in the patient's bladder function, in their symptoms, and their condition, and their overall quality of life. And they could go back to their normal uh, daily life much quicker. So that was promising, and this work was published in The Lancet, which is considered a highly reputable scientific journal. What's even more promising is that work is now focused at printing human kidneys, human livers, and even the human heart. So bioprinting will have a huge impact for New Zealand, and it's going to bring along many benefits along with it to our country. The first benefits are the economic benefits. Right now, when, in our country, when patients need transplant surgery, they're put on a waiting list. But while they're waiting, they still need treatment because one of their organs is not working. And so, for example, kidney failure. Kidney failure patients wa waiting for a transplant are given kidney dialysis. But the cost of kidney dialysis to New Zealand each year is $150 million. Not only that, but currently, after transplant surgery, our patients are given anti-rejection drugs to prevent the re rejection of the transplanted organ. These drugs cost millions of dollars each year for New Zealand. So by having bioprinted organs, we won't have waiting lists anymore. We can perform transplant surgery on demand, therefore no need for kidney dialysis. We can also eliminate the use of anti-rejection drugs because the organs will be made from patients' own cells, therefore no chance of rejection. Therefore, we will save New Zealand over $150 million each year. What about the social benefits and the health benefits? Well, bioprinting will improve the health outcome of our people. By having readily available bioprinted organs, we can perform transplant surgery exactly at the right time when our patients need it the most. Our patients won't be waiting months and they won't be waiting years when they need something that urgent. Therefore, they can have improvements in their symptoms, in their condition, and their overall quality of life much sooner rather than later. And so that they can go back to their normal day-to-day -day life without the burden of their condition and their disease. It's also likely that um, through this technology will increase the average life expectancy of uh, people in New Zealand. And this increase will come with reduced disability. What about the environmental benefits? Most people don't know this, but dialysis on its own consumes over 90 million liters of water in New Zealand. It also produces tens of millions of kilograms of carbon-related waste because of all the medical equipment that is used. This harms our beautiful environment. So by having bioprinted organs, we will reduce the need for kidney dialysis, therefore reducing our water consumption by tens of millions of liters, will reduce our carbon waste by tens of millions of kilograms, therefore reducing our carbon footprint and reducing the burden on our beautiful environment. 
But there are also limitations to this technology. The first is that bioprinters cost money. A high-end bioprinter can cost anywhere between $100,000 to $150,000. And if our uh, major hospitals in New Zealand were to have a bioprinter each, it will cost us. But when you think about it, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that we spend on this technology, and in return, saving hundreds of millions of dollars each year, I think this is a good investment. Also, sure, we can print simple structures such as heart valves, such as your bladders, such as arteries, and even your kidneys, but the more complex structures such as your lungs, your heart, and even your brain, I believe they're going to take many more years to develop and actually uh, put into practice and print. But despite all the limitations here, bioprinters, bioprinting has huge potential. It has the potential to put New Zealand as a global leader in transplant surgery and medicine. We can be examples for other countries to follow. Our country will be signif significantly impacted by bioprinting. But the best part that I like about this technology is that it will have a huge impact on everyday New Zealanders, their family, and their communities, and enable them to live healthier lives in the future. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Karen. Is my microphone working? Jolly good. If we were to go to the, talking about organ donors, if we were to go to the opt-out system rather than the opt-in system, would that not make organs more available and bioprinting with the associated expense of it unnecessary? Sorry, what did you mean by opt-out and opt-in? Well, at the moment, you have to say, I'm prepared to be an organ donor. Yep. But if you had to say, I'm not prepared to be an organ donor, then you'd get more organ donors. Because by having to opt out, people would do it. Do you see what I mean? By having to... By inertia law. Right. So by opting out, you get more organ donors. No. By insisting that people do opt out, you would get more organ donors because people wouldn't bother to opt out. Yep. So automatically, you would be an organ donor unless you said specifically you weren't. Oh, and right. So make... And that's one of the arguments about the shortage of organs in New Zealand, that right. we should go to the opt-out. So making it compulsory? Unless, unless you opted out specifically. Yeah. All right? It's like people wouldn't opt out necessarily. Yeah. And that would increase the number of organs. So... If we had a much increased source yep. of organs available for transplant in New Zealand, sure. yep. would that make bioprinting unnecessary? Well, the thing is that, I mean, that's just one of the schemes that the government can use to increase the number of organ donors. The government's already tried many schemes to increase the number of organs. It's never it's tried the opt-out one. It's never? No. Well, it's, it's tried um, things like making it easier for, for people to donate and things like that, but... It has increased it a little bit, I, I think by about 10 organs per year. But it, that hasn't been significant because the number of people waiting for transplants each year is well over 500. And so by increasing organs by 10, there will still be 500 people left without an organ. So, How uh, many bioprinters would we need to provide for 500 patients? Well, it's at any given time we have 500 patients, All not right. just yearly. But ha we would need a bioprinters for each of our major hospitals. That's where transplant surgery usually occurs. Well, but would we? Why couldn't we have one central bioprinter? Well, we could. But the thing is that bioprinters would take at least maybe a day or two to print the organ. And so if we want our patients to have the transplant surgery at the right time, by having more, we could print more and therefore more transplant surgeries. So the bladder is one thing. Yep. Um, the heart, you suggested, is way in the distance. Yep. But kidneys are very complicated as well. How sure. long do you think it is before a kidney could be bioprinted? Kidneys are complicated, but they're less complicated than, than say, a heart. Um, in fact, studies have been done in animals where they've printed uh, miniature kidneys 
and they, they've transplanted them into the animals, and they've found significant results. So I would say kidneys would be at least in the next few years, um, because bladders are already being printed. So kidneys, want, they need to get into the human stage, so it, it will be in the few years, but hearts definitely probably 10, 15 years from now. Um, I note that you say that, that you're a Christian. Is, is there an issue of playing God here that you needed to work out ethically? I think people will eventually die at some, for some reason. It could be infections. It could be other things. Um, this is not necessarily playing God because we're not giving unlimited life to people. We're expanding their life expectancy, but definitely in the future, patients will die of something. Unless you can bioprint immortality. Yeah. Um, how do you keep the organ alive while you are printing it? while you're printing it. So you print it, and while it's being printed, the cells are already alive. And so it's being printed with hydrogels. Hydrogels provide the solution uh, for the cells to grow in. And then once, once they're uh, printed, they can actually be uh, put into a special machine where it mimics the human environment, the temperature, pH, etc. But while it's being printed, is that a logistical problem that's been sorted? Well, while it's being printed, it will be in the medium which provides the solution for the cells to grow and to survive. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Thank okay. you.